special thanks and gratitude to our wonderful camp meeting orchestra. Yes, praise the Lord. That was such a blessing. And special appreciation to Elder Denslow for mentioning the project that we have at Andrews University to renovate our uh, residence hall for our female students, Lamson Hall. Some of you may have even lived in Lamson Hall, and you know that it needs a renovation. So, we would like to actually update as many rooms as we can in July. So if some of you can come for a week or two weeks or even more, we would like to invite you. We'll give you a place to stay. If you have a camper or motorhome, we have full hookups. If not, we have a place there. We have food for you to eat while you're there. And we would just love to have you be a part of getting ready Lamson Hall for our students who will be coming in August. So, you saw some phone numbers on the screen. You also saw an email address. But if you didn't have a chance to jot it down, you can just send me a message at president at andrews.edu. And we will get you the information. We would love to have you come join us. There is carpet to take out. There are walls to paint. There's new carpet to put in. There's new furnishings. And we would love to have you. So, if that's something you'd like to do, just let us know and we'll welcome you. Well, tomorrow night, we'll have the study together of another Bible character. But I would be remiss if I didn't spend an evening with you to talk about the importance of Christian education. Because this is biblical. You see, when God created, He established three institutions. What are the three? Marriage. marriage. You're right. He established marriage. What's the second one? The Sabbath. And we celebrate marriage and the Sabbath. But God established a third important institution because every day in the evening, He came to teach Adam and Eve. In fact, in the book Education, Ellen White dedicates a whole chapter to the Eden School. And I don't know if you've thought about it, but because God established these three institutions from the creation, the devil in the great controversy has focused on each of those three. But God has also focused His power in reestablishing and safeguarding each of those three. Not only that, but when God sent His own Son to come to this world, He first had Him go through a process of education. I don't know if you thought about the fact that God could have sent His Son already as an adult. And He could have saved 30 years from the plan of salvation. But God thought that the development, the educational process was so important that He had His own Son increase in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Four development dimensions. The intellectual, the physical, the spiritual, and the social. That's God's plan. And when Jesus began His ministry, He spent more time teaching than preaching or healing. God sent His Son as a teacher. And so tonight, I would like to take some time together to 
answer an important question. And it has to do with Adventist education. But first, I'd like to begin this evening with an important statement. And this is it. Adventist education is the longest and the largest evangelistic event of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I'd like to provide you with the evidence. First of all, in terms of duration, depending on where you go to school in the world, children and youth are in school from five to nine hours a day and from 160 to 260 days per year. And depending on how many years are in Adventist education, from 1 to 16 or more years. Now, if you take the least amount of time, five hours a day, 160 days a year, for just one year, that represents 800 hours of evangelism that takes place. Now think about that for just a moment. That's like an evangelistic series happening every night for two hours for more than an entire year. And if they attend for more than one year, that can add up to more than 30 Five thirty-seven thousand hours. That's a powerful evangelistic opportunity. And how about in terms of size? Well, I'd just like to mention that the evangelistic effort of Adventist education involves children at almost 7,000 sites around the world. There are 61,000 evangelists meeting every day with more than 1.4 million children. Praise the Lord. And in terms of adolescence, 2,800 sites, 40,000 evangelists, and 615,000 attending. And in terms of young people, 163 sites, 16,000 evangelists, 160 attending, all together, each day, more than 2.1 children, adolescents, and youth are participating in God's plan for evangelism. That's powerful. And what else is happening? I'd like to ask the question, is it effective? Is this longest and largest evangelism event in the Adventist church? Does it make a difference? So to answer that question, I would like us to look at the results of several things. The first thing I'd like to mention is a study that took place just a few years ago. It's called the Cognitive Genesis Study. It actually took place over a number of years, 2006 to 2009, 800 Adventist schools in the United States, Canada, and Bermuda. 52,000 students participated in this study in grades 3 through 9 and grade 11. Also, the parents, the teachers, the principals, participated in this study. And these are the results. Students in Seventh-day Adventist schools surpassed the national average on standardized tests in all subject areas. For all grade levels. And not only that, for all school sizes. 
and for regardless of ability level. Isn't that amazing? That is the power of Adventist education. Not only that, but every year that they were in an Adventist school, that difference increased. Both in terms of achievement and ability of the students. This effect was so remarkable that when uh, Dr. Dobermeyer heard of this, he noticed that there was something else. And that had to do with the graduation rate from high school. Nationally, that graduation rate across all schools in the United States is 82%. But those who attend Adventist schools, that graduation rate is 98.4%. And of those who are graduating, 91% plan to go to college and prepare themselves for God's work. Again, that's an amazing difference. So when Martin Dobelmeyer heard about this, Martin Dobelmeyer is an eminent film producer. He's produced a lot of PBS specials, public broadcasting service. He created a film full length called The Blueprint as a PBS special that aired across the nation. And this has to do with Adventist education and the difference that it makes. So, the academic result is impressive, but it's not the most important. So what is the most important? The Bible points this out. What will you benefit? If you gain the whole world, but lose your soul. Ellen White talks about the most important matter. She says that the most important matter in education is the conversion, the salvation of the students. And that salvation experience, that conversion, is exemplified in joining God's family. So I'd like to put up on the screen here, what does that look like? The joining of God's family as a result of participating in Adventist education. First of all, over the last 10 years, 2013 to 2022, the last year we have the statistics turned in from the world divisions, directly as a result of Adventist education, there have been 465,000 baptisms. Now, these are not including the baptisms of young people of the church that take place, for example, at camp and at other wonderful events. These are specifically those who've been baptized as a result of being in an Adventist school, such as as a result of the week of prayer in the Adventist school. Now, if you stop and think about this for a moment, that 465,000 is the equivalent of two conferences, the size of Michigan Conference being established each year. That's significant. I'd like to share some results from a couple of studies that took a look at, so what happens when young people attend Adventist schools? This was a study conducted in the Southern Union, and it took a look at young people from Adventist families. So all of these young people were raised in Adventist families. Some of them, as you can see here, had no 
Adventist education. Some of them had one or more years of Adventist education, and the third group had 11 or more years. In other words, they attended an Adventist school basically from first grade through the end of secondary, high school. You'll notice that the colors, the aqua color, represents those young people who were baptized from Adventist families. Those who had no Adventist education, about 60% were baptized at some point growing up. Those who had one or more years of Adventist education, nearly 85% were baptized. And those who had attended 11 or more years, 96.9% decided to join the church. Now we realize this is always a personal decision, but when they participate in Adventist education, those influences have an impact on their life. Here's another study. This was conducted in, a few years ago by the education director of the Lake Union when he was doing his doctorate, uh, did a research study. Again, this was a comparison of those children from Adventist families who had no Adventist education, elementary or secondary, some Adventist education at some point during that, and 12 years or more of Adventist education. Again, you can see very similar results to the previous study. 61% no Adventist education, 95% from those who had some education, and in this particular case, those who had 12 years, all of them had joined the church at some point in time. Again, another way of looking at it, those who had not attended uh, Adventist education, uh, sorry, those who were not baptized had only attended 2.4 years of Adventist education, and those who had baptized eight years of Adventist education, on average. That's why Ellen White says, the work of education and the work of redemption are one. So, what can we look at in terms of Adventist education? I would like to just affirm that it is fulfilling the mission that God has given to us. Adventist education makes a difference in the evangelistic mission of the church. But there's another important part to ask. Yes, they join, but do they remain? And again, we recognize that that is always a personal decision. But does Adventist education have a role? To do that, I'd like us to consider the fact that since 1965, approximately 34 million people have joined the Adventist church. Of those 34 million, 20 million remained. But sadly, 13 million left. About 40%. In other words, four out of every ten people who joined left. That's tragic. It points to something that we need to do, and that's called nurturing, discipling. But what about young people? There was a study called the Youth Retention Study. This was a study that looked at 1,500 Adventist young people, and it started looking at them at the age of 15, 16 years old. Then it maintained contact with them every year for the next 
10 years. These young people were representative of Adventist youth. Some came from large churches, some came from small churches, some came from small towns, some came from big cities. Some attended public schools, some attended Adventist schools, and from all ethnic groups. As you can notice here, how many had left the church 10 years later? In many of the demographic groups, 50%. So we are not losing just one coin. We are losing half of the coins. Jeremiah asks an important question. Where is the flock that was given to you, your beautiful flock? That's a question for all of us, for our prayers. But the question is also one that has to do with Adventist education. Over the past three decades, there have been seven specific studies that have been conducted in relationship to this question. Now, it's interesting that out of those seven studies, three of them have been conducted in the last 10 years. And I've gone back and want you to see the whole spread, because across time, these seven studies give us a very complete picture, because they occurred at different times, in different places, and using different types of strategies. For example, some of them were multi-year study. One of the studies, for example, looked at our Adventist young people every 10 years. Another study followed them for 10 years, the one we just talked about. Others were doctoral dissertations. Again, one of them following students to see what happened afterwards. And two of the more recent studies were global studies in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So you get a very complete picture of what's happening. And I thought I would just share briefly with you, so what does this mean? Well, the first study, the Value Genesis study, looked at information from 2,200 12th grade students in Adventist schools. And it showed that the more years of study in an Adventist school, the greater that person's loyalty to the Seventh-day Adventist church. Not only that, but they believed in the doctrines of the Seventh-day Adventist church, the fundamental beliefs, and they intended to remain an Adventist at age 40. The more years in an Adventist school, the deeper that commitment. It also looked at the factors that affected or that related to the development of faith in these young persons. There are a number of things here, but you might notice what's at the top of the list. Attending an Adventist school. In fact, of these young people, 81% of all the students said that attending an Adventist school was, in fact, the most important thing that has helped me develop my religious faith. The second study is the youth retention study that we just mentioned a moment ago, this 10-year study of 1,500 young people that started at age 15, 16. One of the key findings of that study is that the longer they attended an Adventist school, the more positively that related to their commitment to Jesus Christ. That they would say, my relationship with Jesus is stronger now. Religion is important in my life. And I engage in personal Bible 
study. The third study is the Epperson study that we mentioned a moment ago whenever we looked at joining the church. But this is what it looks like in terms of remaining in the church as adults. Those who had no Adventist education, 58% were attending church regularly. 79% of those who had one or more years of Adventist education, and of those who had 11 or more years as young adults, more than 90% were attending church regularly. And this is important because when you are inactive, you begin to unlink with the church. The Rice study was conducted in Southern California, and this has a couple of fascinating results. You can see here, for example, those who graduated, children from Adventist families who graduated from public school compared to those who graduated from an Adventist academy. Now, over on the right, the colors, the first color, the aqua color, is those who were baptized into the church and continued attending after they had graduated from high school or from academy. You can see that 37% of those who were high school graduates from Seventh-day Adventist families continued attending the church in this group as young adults, whereas 77% and you look at that, that is twice more likely to stay when they had attended or graduated from an Adventist academy. Not only that, they were three times more likely to marry an Adventist compared to those from Adventist families but who graduated from public high school. The fifth study is the Minder study conducted here in the Lake Union, and you can see those who joined and remained. No Adventist education, some Adventist education, and 98.2% in this case when they had 12 grades of Adventist education. The sixth study was a global study. It looked at people around the world who are either remained in the Adventist church or left the Adventist church. Those who left the Adventist church, ex-members or were no longer attending, only 17% of those had attended any time Adventist education. Whereas those who remained, over half of them had had some Adventist education in their life three times more likely to have had Adventist education compared those who remained and those who were no longer associated with the Adventist church. The final study was a st also a global study. It encompassed nine out of the 13 divisions around the world at the Seventh-day Adventist church. And this one looked at those who attended Adventist education during elementary, at least at some point, or during secondary, at least at some point, and those who attended higher Adventist higher education at some point, and those who uh, were involved in only Adventist education versus other education, comparing current members on the right versus ex-members. Those who were current members twice the, the probability of them having attended an Adventist education was twice as high as those who were not attending church anymore. Those who were current members, one-third of them had attended uh, Adventist education, whereas only 14% of those who left had attended Adventist education. 2.5 times. And those in elementary school, it was three times more likely. Those who were remaining had attended an Adventist school. 
By the way, that makes sense because the greatest impressions happen early in life. There is a relationship across every level, but the greatest impact seems to be early on in the child's life. So, we're back to the question, and this is the key question. Are joining the church and remaining in the church associated with young people's participation in Adventist education? And the answer is, certainly, yes. Across the three decades in different times and places, the answer is consistent and it's persuasive. Adventist education makes a difference. Now, most of what we looked at in these seven studies had to do, with the exception of a couple of the last ones, with elementary and secondary. But I'd like to share with you the results from one more study. This study has, is the College Impact Research Report. And if you notice here on the screen, it compares the graduates of Adventist colleges and universities here in North America with their Adventist peers, but who graduated from public colleges, or universities. Are you with me? So these are young people from Adventist families. They're Adventist young people who attended either Adventist education or graduated from a public institution. And these are the results. Those who graduated from Adventist colleges and universities were two times more likely, while in college, to have attended church or campus worship services. Twice as likely to be spiritually mentored. Twice as likely to develop a deeper understanding of the importance of healthful living and to develop lifelong friendships with faculty or staff. Three times more likely while in college, those who graduated from an Adventist university to agree with the statement, my college helped me integrate my faith with other aspects of my life. Three times more likely to have developed a deeper desire to become a church leader. Three times more likely to develop moral principles to guide actions. Three times more likely to experience friends with values and beliefs similar to their own. To experience positive dating uh, relationships. To develop knowledge and skills in preparation for marriage. Three times more likely to develop a deeper understanding of their religious values and beliefs, to experience a short-term mission trip, to experience professors who invited them home for a meal, to work on campus, to work as a residence hall assistant or peer advisor, to participate in a student-led Bible study, or prayer group. Four times more likely in an Adventist college, those who graduated to have participated in music groups such as band, orchestra, or choir, to experience friends who positively influenced their walk with Christ, to experience friends who prayed or studied the Bible with them to develop a sense of God's calling for my life. Five times 
more likely while in college to agree there were faculty and staff after whom I could model my own spiritual life. To have developed a deepened sense of spirituality. To develop a deeper desire to be involved in the Adventist church. To develop a deeper desire for mission service. To develop a meaningful prayer life. To develop a deeper desire to study God's Word. Five times more likely. To experience mission service for a semester or more. To develop a stronger commitment to the church. And finally, seven times more likely. Do you see the difference in those bars? When graduating from an Adventist college and university, seven times more likely to experience professors who studied the Bible with me and or increased my faith in the Bible. To experience professors who prayed with me. To experience professors who positively influenced my relationship with Christ and to experience friends who attended worship services with me. And finally, seven times more likely while in college to develop a deeper personal relationship with Jesus. In conclusion, Proverbs 3 Verse 6 says, In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. We want God to direct our path, to lead us in His way. But there's a condition. Did you notice? In order for God to direct our paths, we must acknowledge Him in all our ways. And that includes how we are educated. Acknowledge Him in all your ways. You see, in Adventist education, children and youth experience joining the family of God. They not only join, but they tend to remain as part of that family with the goal that they can experience God's saving grace in their life. Not only disciples, but they become disciple makers for God. Ellen White says, the work of education and redemption truly is one and the same work. I'd like to conclude with this verse from Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah, chapter 54 and verse 13. This is such a wonderful passage. It says, All your children shall be taught by God. And great shall be the peace of your children. That word peace in the Hebrew, the original language of Isaiah, is the word shalom. And certainly, shalom does mean peace. But the word shalom is so much more than just peace. It means well-being. 
health, safety. Isn't that what we want for our lives, for our children, our grandchildren? We want to experience shalom. We want them to experience shalom. But again, there's a condition. In order to experience shalom, we must be taught by God. Taught by God through Adventist education. Adventist education does make a difference. We educate not just for this life, but for eternal life. Choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, Jesus Christ, our teacher. We have talked this evening about the plan that you have established for our children, our youth, but also for our lives. Lord, each of us, we would sit at the feet of Jesus. We would learn from you the plans that you have. We would fulfill your purpose in our lives. Lord, we look forward to the soon coming of Jesus. We look forward to entering heaven's school and learning from you throughout all of eternity. So Lord, bless each one here tonight with your Holy Spirit. We give our hearts and our lives to you. In Jesus' name, Amen.